Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at Patreon.com slash Inspired Disorder. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. A fish called Wanda. It's a movie that's one of my blind spot movies. It's a film that came out in 1988. It is uh, John Cleese starring, uh, written and directed by John Cleese, at least uncredited directing, uh, Charles uh, Crichton. Crichton? Crichton? Uh, is also somebody that helped write the story and direct. Uh, and then John Cleese also plays one of the main characters. Uh, the main, main character, the lead character, the lead actor in this movie, I would say 100% is Jamie Lee Curtis playing Wanda. It is, she is definitely a badass, and I could definitely see why she was, I mean, this is her movie, I would say. She's surrounded by a lot of ca- characters. Uh, you know, it's a ensemble cast, I would guess, on, on some level. There's a lot of players in this movie. It's a comedy, heist, uh, uh, con artist type of a movie uh, where we start seeing our characters uh, in the middle or planning and then executing a jewelry robbery. Uh, and uh, after the robbery... Like, before the robbery, you can already see that people are playing different sides of things, but, you know, unexplained at this point. You can definitely see Jamie Lee Curtis and uh, Kevin Kline, who plays Otto, who is her lover, but also he's playing, he's pretending to be her brother uh, in this situation. Um, You can see that there's something separate going on with them, that they're kind of trying to scam these other people it's you know they are the only two americans in uh there it takes place in the uk the other people involved with this job are people from the uk um which is uh ken who's played by michael palin uh and uh no john cleese isn't in that but who's the who's the bad guy percival i guess is the kind of the he thinks he's the mastermind behind this job. Uh, but Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, who plays Wanda, but is not the only Wanda in this movie. There is literally a fish called Wanda uh, in this movie, which is interesting that the name of the movie is called that. And there's a character named Wanda. And, I mean, the fish at one point is... I, uh, metaphorically, the fish probably has a bigger meaning to it uh, that's not just, for whatever reason, they name two things uh, Wanda. But um, she is definitely the mastermind in this whole thing. Uh, Ken plays a stuttering idiot, like excessive stutter, uh, which, because this movie is a comedy... There is a lot of goofiness, even the way, especially Kevin Klein seems very goofy, uh, very like overly comical. <clears throat> like his vibe is a little bit too much, a little bit over. But he plays like his character is very interesting because he's like he's like this machismo guy, but he's also tr- tries to sound and and be like uh, well read. He tries to appear as being well read as being like this Zen person. I would say in today's terms, he feels a lot like somebody who would listen to the Joe Rogan experience, who's like a meathead, but like meditates and does ayahuasca or whatever. Like, but you know, really not, but then also being anti-vax and like not really caring about other people that may not have millions of dollars to pay for medical bills. Um, Like, he feels very much like that kind of archetype, especially being one of the only two Americans. I think him and uh, Wanda both do a good job. Otto and Wanda do a good job at at representing kind of American ideals, like backstabbingness, criminal, uh, like this, uh, uh, like just an inability to be criticized on any level. Um, which is interesting that they're both, and he plays like he he plays like a very he's a very goofy character in this movie. Like he shows up, like in windows, where it's like, how did he get there? Like he's just everywhere. 
Uh, but anyway, it's it's a fun like what's going on mystery. You know, double crosses. Uh, they use sex like. Especially Wanda, Jamie Lee Curtis, uses sex uh, as a manipulation tactic on everybody. She uses it for Otto. She uses it for Ken at one point. Obviously, she's using it for the the big boss guy. Uh, She uses it for uh, John John Cleese's character, Archie. She uses her sexuality as a way to manipulate situations, uh, which even Kevin Kline's character, Otto, tries to do. Uh, in situations and it's really fast really well written really punchy really tight like all of these characters because they are like everybody's scamming everybody on like multiple levels all of the characters really improvise in the moment of like well at least their characters are improvising in the moment like something happens they they could potentially be busted but they find a way to explain and like even no matter how ridiculous it is, the fact that they're confidently going with their their explanation of why some craziness just happened. It's still like believable, but it's just like snappy, great writing. Like the writing of this movie is so good, especially like not only the fact that it's comedic, which a lot of times people, for whatever reason, take zero effort into writing a good comedy like so many comedies are just bad because they they think like the you just have to have a few jokes in there and then you're good you don't have to like actually have good writing you don't have to have to flesh out characters you don't have to have a story that kind of is interesting in any way which this one does all of those things has interesting very interesting characters you know very specific type comedic characters but like specific different characters in a story that involves a lot of twists and turns and people backstabbing each other so you have to keep track of what everybody's doing and and i really enjoyed it i really enjoyed it and it's there's a funny bit in this so so they do this robbery and the whole plan was otto and wanda were going to rat out the the head guy that wanda's been manipulating right they're going to they're going to call the cops and turn him in and to get busted for this jewelry heist but what happens so he gets arrested and while he's in jail you have uh his buddy ken who's the stuttering guy who's clearly an animal lover like when we're introduced to him he's feeding his fish one of which is called wanda and maybe the fish is called wanda because he secretly loves wanda and there's that sort of thing so maybe that is why but He's got posters of, like, wildlife around. Like, he's clearly that character is, like, gushing, just oozing animal rights activist. Uh, but his, his job, one of his, his character's job in this movie is, like, to try. There's one witness, and it's after the robbery when they're driving away. This old lady is taking her dogs on a walk, and the car that they're in, the getaway, the getaway car, almost runs over the dog. So the old lady identifies him as one of the people in the car uh or the person in the car and so that's the only real evidence they have that he can be blamed for this crime um so ken's job is to eliminate that witness the one witness and in his attempt to do it it's just this great gag that keeps happening throughout the movie that every time he tries to do, and he tries these like elaborate ways to kill her without, to make it look like an accident. Like one of them is he has this really vicious dog and he's like, tries to get this dog to like attack her scent. And of course the attack dog goes and just eats one of her dogs. So it's like every time he attempts to kill her, one of the dogs ends up dying and she starts off with three little shih tzus and by the end after the last one dies she finally has a heart attack but it's a really fun bit that happens throughout this movie where it's like this character that loves animals so much is trying to kill this old lady and ends up killing all these dogs instead and it's hilarious that that's like he keeps messing up in that situation 
Uh, but he comes back later also where his stutter has a big effect on it. Um, and also his love for animals, specifically the fish that he has, uh, plays a big part of it. Um, but Otto and Otto's like thinks he's on the same side of that Wanda is. But Wanda, like we see early on, they, they go after the dude's been arrested. They go to the safe to, to break the jewels out of the safe and they find that they've already been they've been moved already. Uh, so they don't, the, the safe is empty and she's right as he's about to Otto's like the safe cracker, right as he's opened the safe, she's about to whack him on the head with the metal pipe. So you see early on that like, she's kind of orchestrating this whole thing and everybody else thinks that they are, are going to be, you know, t- double crossing this other person. But meanwhile, she's, she is constantly floating at the top of the heap making sure that she's going to be ready to double cross when the time comes so she can end uh, end the journey with the, the jewels. Uh, a little over four years ago, I started The Many Faces. It's an ongoing series of abstract ink portraits. Each piece is improvised. Each piece is released daily. Start collecting now. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash TMF. That stands for The Many Faces. And save yourself 25% when you use coupon code RTS. That stands for The Ray Taylor Show because that's what you're listening to. And I love you. So I want you to save 25% when you use that coupon code. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash TMF and use coupon code RTS to save 25% when you start collecting one of over 1,600 original ink paintings. By myself, I made them. Support me, I love you. Back to the show. Funny parts with, uh, she has a language kink, which is just an interesting like character trait for anybody to have. I mean, as far as kinks are concerned, uh, a language kink is is something that I've never heard. But she, you know, she has the thing where like Otto, when he speaks in Italian, it turns her on. And later on in the movie, she starts flirting with Archie, played by John Cleese, uh, who's playing the lawyer of the guy that's in, in jail. Um, and she like basically starts off their interaction by acting like a fan of lawyers, which is funny. But it pulls out like she's so like just such a great actress so much energy and like so believable in these like wacky kind of situations that it like definitely it definitely works she makes it she makes it work uh but she also she finds out while she's trying to seduce archie to try and find out about what they know what evidence they know to make sure that the the guy in jail isn't going to rat her out and to make sure that uh, he hasn't, you know, turned in the jewels to try and get a, a reduced sentence. Like, she's just trying to find out information. So she tries to uh, manipulate John Cleese's character through sexuality, as she's done before. But while she's doing that, she finds out that not only does he know Italian, but he also speaks Russian. And there's this scene where they're one of the times where they're trying to run away together. Of course, he's married, has a kid, but he's unhappy. And, you know, she's she's a young, attractive, you know, full of energy type of a woman. So he's like, you know, he feeds off of that 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 energy and he, he it, it reinvigorates him. Uh, but one of the times where they're trying to get away uh, to to, uh, you know, fool around, uh, she finds out that he speaks all these. And it's like she's turned. It's like it's kind of funny and not funny, but it's it's such an interesting character trait. To have somebody like just so sexually turned on by somebody speaking in a, especially like Russian, like Italian is a, somewhat of a romantic language, you know, or maybe Portuguese, very, you know, very like I would say a romantic language, but Russian, Russian, and then also like you know German, like those kind of Eastern blocky languages are very harsh. They are not romantic whatsoever. So that when she gets even more turned on with the Russian thing, it's like, uh, it's it's that's funny because it's like that's not that's not what it should. That's not 
It's like wearing clothes made out of sandpaper. That doesn't, that's not supposed to work. But it does in this movie. Uh, and it just makes, it just makes the characters so interesting. Um, but yeah, a lot of like twists and turns, the way this ends, this ends, uh, there's a scene in the end of this that is just the, the best, like oh, before, okay, so there, let me backtrack before going to the airport scene. Uh, there's a scene where Otto is trying to get information out of Ken. And he's trying to, he's like shoving french fries up his nose, trying to ask him where the, the jewelry is or the, yeah, he doesn't know where the key is. He's just looking for, want to know where the jewelry is. And, uh, and Ken isn't telling him. He ends up, you know, almost suffocating him, putting a pear in his mouth. Um, and then he goes to eating the fish. He has a giant fish tank. Ken has a giant fish tank. One of which of the fish is Wanda, it's a prize fish, uh, and and Otto just goes over there and just starts scooping out one fish. He's like, you know what goes good with chips? We're in the UK, and there's one thing that's just classically known to go with chips. And he goes over to the fish tank and he scoops up one of the fish. He puts it in his mouth and it's like, fish and chips. And then he eats a fish, and it's like. You could see, I mean, they've been setting up this whole movie that Ken is an animal lover and he loves his fish. And it's just like you could see the pain in his face. It's like such good acting, such good acting. And then it gets down to the last fish. And he tells, he tells him, it's like, okay, the key is in the, the chest at the bottom of the fish tank. Otto goes, takes it, the key's not there which he didn't know. Nobody knew that the key had already been stolen by Wanda, which she's been trying to get it back from uh, Archie this whole time. Um, and that's just, it's just such a great scene. Like, of all of the scenes that have had a, a character tied up and then another character trying to interrogate them for information... There's never been a scene where the, the guy eats their fish, their pet fish, as a, a means of interrogating, as a means of getting information from somebody. Uh, but anyway, he gets the information. Then there's this the funny bit where the stutter adds to even more stress because there's like towards the end of this movie, things are going. Like everybody's like, everybody's trying to get these jewels. Once they find out, like, more people, like, towards the, everybody just finds out and everybody's after it. You know, you got Archie after it because he's tired of his life. He wants to move away with Wanda to some exotic location. Wanda's, obviously, the whole, this whole movie, she's been trying to get these jewels. Otto has been trying to work with Wanda to get these jewels, despite Wanda been ready and willing to knock him out uh, in order to take them for herself uh but ken's stutter comes when uh archie no finds out that uh that ken is the one who knows where the key is and uh knows where the jewels are and he's the one that's he wants to uh to confess because it's like his trial goes wrong uh because wanda tries to throw him under the bus and uh you know it's like this it's like everything's falling apart and crumbling around them People are scrambling to try and get these jewels. And while the chaos is happening, you have Ken trying to get out a word that is almost impossible for him to say. He's trying to say the name of the hotel that the, that's by the airport, uh, that the lockbox is, where the jewels are. And he just has this inability to say those words to John Cleese. And it's a funny scene. It's like, because it's taking time. Everything, like, time is of the essence towards the end of this movie. And the stutter that earlier on was, you know, expressed by Otto to be a potential downfall if he ever has to say anything that's important. Um, and, of course, he has to say something that's important later on in the movie. So, you know, good foreshadowing there. A little heavy foreshadowing because Otto is pretty rough on him for his stutter. But foreshadowing nonetheless. Uh so he gets there, and there's this f thing where everybody's running to the airport. Everybody's trying to get to the airport, 
And there's this hilarious, amazing revenge scene where when uh, Otto wakes up and goes to the airport after, uh, well, he's, he, after getting the information from Ken, he goes to the airport and uh, gets knocked out by Wanda, uh, which she's been waiting to do this whole movie. Uh, he wakes up. By that time, Ken is there, Archie is there, and, uh, and Otto accidentally stands in some cement. And it's the scene that I'm sure was referenced in the Austin Powers movie, the scene where there's the steamroller coming at a guy, and he's like, stop! And it's like the slowest vehicle on Earth about to run somebody over. But in this movie, he's stuck in cement, and he only had one bullet left. He missed shooting at Ken. And then he's trying to like bargain with Ken, trying to reason with him uh, as Ken slowly rolls him over. It was just, it was so great. It was such a great scene and like so cool to see the origins of that, that scene, which is just a funny scene. It worked in Austin Powers, even though they changed it to where it's like, oh, the guy was not trapped in any way, wasn't trapped in cement. He was just standing in front of a thing and ends up getting squashed. Um, but yeah, it, it's a, a great revenge for eating the fish. A great revenge. Despite the fact that even though, like, the end, she's in the airplane with Archie, they, they finally, they, they, lo she loves the fact that he can speak in Russian and Italian. It turns her on. He loves the energy that she gives him and is completely upset with her. His life, his wife has all the money anyway, and he's treated like shit, and he's just a lawyer, whatever. They're going to go fly away to Costa Rica with their jewels and just live uh, and, ha and be happy together uh, for uh, probably about a month or two before they get you know, tired of each other. Um, but still, after all of that, you still see Otto poking his head right through the window of the airplane. Like, how did he survive? And he is, like, seemingly stuck to the plane up until it takes off, and then he finally blows off of the plane and, and goes away. I thought he just died from the the rolling pin, but, you know, it was wet cement, so I guess it just he just sunk into the cement and uh, just got covered in cement. But I love this. It was such a fun movie. It was such a... It, took a little bit to get into the the first heist that you see there definitely don't look like people about to pull off a heist they're very sashaying into the jewelry place they're they're pointing guns very effeminately like pointing their arm with the gun one guy's got a crossbow that shoots like a rubber bullet at a thing to open a, it, it it's it's goofy it's so goofy it is the least like aggressive least like machismo jewelry heist that you will ever see and just like kind of like that early batman how batman was kind of like you know just kind of sashaying everywhere you know when they run it's like a very unathletic people doing things like clearly actors that have never been in a gym ever just kind of going around acting manly uh, but after that, once the story gets going and you see all the things, the aspects of it, I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. Uh, it's a great movie. I'm sorry I spoiled it. Just forget everything I said. I mean, it's been out since 88. This is the first time I've seen it. So I'm marking A Fish Called Wanda off of my list of, uh, of blind spot movies. Uh, and I highly recommend checking it out. It was on Hulu when I saw it. You know, by the time you watch this, who knows where it is. But if you get a chance, it's a lot of fun. You get to see Jamie Lee Curtis being amazing. Like, she's amazing. She's amazing in this. This is, out of, out of everybody, she is, she is uh, it, like, an all, she's hit it out of the park. How about that? Uh, but, yeah, check it out if you get a chance. If you haven't, see it again. Uh, a Fish Called Wanda. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on IGTV, YouTube, everywhere else podcasts are found. Binge the full week ad free over at Patreon.com slash Inspired Disorder. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Peace out!